295 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor, Northwestern Captain Sig Hansen approaches the first pots of the season he set in last night's storm. The Northwestern was battling 20-foot seas and was forced to blindly splash 100 pots. set here and to be quite honest I don't care where it ends up I just want to get it off the deck it's a lot safer don't miss Jake's pretty freaking important you don't miss it don't miss. first pop coming up here yeah I could have made it much easier for you I don't expect the first pop's gonna make or break our season but We'll see. Come on! Come on! Oh, yeah. oh, I see some crap. Nice and clean looking. Not bad! Bad! Six. You know, Opie's sorting on the table. That name is a shoveler. It's because he's really fast. Knee deep in crap. Right now, I feel like we, we got lucky and landed on them, or at least some really good spots right off the bat. And now we're getting a feel for what's going on. You can dial in, so it just it clicks that much faster. You know, if you can pull gear and the weather permits it, you kind of want to do that. If you have a schedule and say you're going to pull gear on this this day, you might as well toss it out the window because the weatherman might say different. Your first day of fishing is usually the longest. It'll be a long day. Eighty-five miles to the northeast, the Time Bandit is enjoying a Bering Sea sunrise. And calmer waters after being battered by the last storm. This trip, that's for sure. The whole boat took a beating. If you looked inside my stomach right now, I would be that flag last night. Blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, man, last night was not a good night for me. That was rougher than hell. I had to watch out for every wave to make sure these guys didn't get killed. And then when I seen Scotty going towards the edge of the boat on a pick and boom hook. That was not a good feeling. With deck lights destroyed, missing deck boards, and a shredded flag, Captain Andy looks forward to calmer seas. There's nothing that changes a crew member's attitude more than calm weather after getting his ass kicked. Look at the 10 foot wave roll by instead of 35 footers. Mother Nature smiling upon us again. Now, Andy is finally able to haul some gear. But he set this string on the advice from older brother, Jonathan. Came down where Jonathan was last year, where he just found just spectacular fishing. He's an eye pole full bots. Jonathan's advice isn't paying off. And he's averaging only 175 keepers a pot. Not as good as I was hoping to see. Yes, sir. 179. <laughs> this is where he did 
good last year. He had 1100s. I'm not seeing it right now. I made the move to come over and listen to him. I would have never sat here. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing here. Okay, it's dying off right here. Came here, we tried John's spot. It was a hot spot last year, but that was March, two months from now. And the crab kind of migrate down this way. You can leave one a mile down, stack bad ones. Don't you tell me what to do. <laughs> Don't you tell me what to do. That's what I said. Crabbing sucks. It sucks bad here. Captain John's thinking through a season right now in his own head. Oh, this is going to be good right here, man. Yeah, I'm just trying to help him, but I don't want to All right. change change destiny. You got your backseat drivers. You got your backseat drivers. It's Andy that's the captain. Hell, I never know who is in the captain's seat. I know I answered Andy, but sometimes I look up there, and Jonathan's running the boat, driving the boat. All right, we have one more to go. One more? Oh. This is when we start to have fun. The crab aren't here, the crab aren't here. So, we're gonna stack them on, stack 50 pots on, move them. Stack another 50, move them. That's my plan, that's my mission. And God dang it, we're gonna go do it. I'm not saying a word. I would kind of take John along for like a mascot. Tell me to go places, tell me how to fish. <laughs> it's, it's tough watching when your brothers fish. We don't really know why he is here, Captain Ron. Three hundred forty-five miles to the northwest of Dutch Harbor, the Time Bandit has left Captain Jonathan's grounds and is gearing up to haul pots in the area known to crabbers as Mr. Magoo. I'm on my old stomping grounds, Mr. Magoo. This is our, this is our spot, the Hill Strand Magoo spot. You ever seen Mr. Magoo? He's blind. Yeah. Yep. See his chin. Nothing with him with his hat on right here. <laughs> yeah. Little forehead. And There's nose. Mr. Magoo. Mouth and chin. It's called Magoo. <laughs> Magoo's been good to us, pretty good to us. It's gonna be very cold. I don't know so much cold, the temperature wise, but the wind is blowing, I guess, just sideways. The weather has picked up out here. Not an ass kicker like it was two nights ago, but we got a little bit of choppy weather. It's gonna keep that Captain Andy on his toes tonight. Let me check these on the After side. Jonathan's hot spot proved to be nothing more than a cold desert, Captain Andy took 50 pots and splashed them on Mr. Magoo. Now, after soaking for 12 hours, Andy's not the only hill strand waiting for the results. We're here, I wouldn't be able to sleep. You have to find out. You have to find out. <laughs> If this pays off for Andy, more than bragging rights, he'll have the chance to finally throw a muzzle on his backseat driver. Yeah, this big move just totally paid off for us. 
As Andy continues to produce the big numbers, older brother Jonathan decides being right isn't as important as being rich. We're gonna come back out. I mean, it's gonna be a way quicker trip next trip. I'm gonna we'll slam here one time and have 120,000 pounds have to go in. That's what I like to hear. One hundred miles to the southwest on the Wizard, the crew returns to fishing after Captain Keith's pep talk. So I guess we're losers. I don't know. Just keep going, keep doing what we're doing. Pick it up a notch or two, I guess, and see if that pleases them. Well, you know, everybody works hard in Bering Sea. To some of the guys, maybe I insulted them. You know, like in that situation, Lenny took a personal right out of the gate, you know, because he's, uh, he's the kind of guy that's pretty proud of what he does. He does a really good job. And, um, you know, I think I rubbed him the wrong way, you know? Hey, have Lenny shoot up here. Okay. Just do me one favor, okay? If I ever go into one of my tirades, Sorry. if I ever go into one of my speeches, no matter what, yes. bear with me and don't don't say anything. All right. All right. I'm sorry. Because I am an emotional guy and I tend to snap really, really quickly. No, you had every right. So, anyways, Lenny, take my apology. I'm sorry I snapped. That's the last thing I wanted to do. Right on. All right. There may be peace with Lenny, but down in the galley, Greenhorn Moy's been stewing, and he's not about to let the captain have the last word. What do you want, Moy? Well, I want to start out with, I'm not riding anybody's freaking coattails. Oh. I paid it the first 230 pots. Moy, I'll then... tell you what right now, get out of my wheelhouse now. I don't need to hear a whiny little Greenhorn in my wheelhouse right now. So just can it. Enjoy your downtime. That guy has no f brain. What an idiot. A, you don't do that. B, particularly when the skipper's upset with anyone. Ah, it's not smart. I think it's absolute that he peels me out when there was a stack of 200 freaking pots in front of him and couldn't see what was going on on the deck. Moy breaks the golden rule of any crab fishing boat. Never question the captain. I, I just, uh, I, I'm at a loss that, you know what, probably the one guy that really needed to hear that talk just now didn't hear a single word. <laughs>